I've flown jets right up to the venom, but nothing, nothing like her, nothing like a Spitfire. It was a super aircraft, it was, absolutely. It was so sensitive on the controls. There was no heaving or pulling and pushing and kicking. You just breathed on it when you wanted. If you wanted to turn, you just moved your hands and slowly she went. She really was the perfect flying machine. I've never known anything sweeter. When you first got into the seat and opened the throttle, it felt as if someone had given you a good kick up the bottom and away you went. The British never gave us any flight manuals, just word of mouth. We'd ask them what we could and couldn't do, and they'd say, hell, you've got a fighter plane. You can do anything you want. Straight down, full throttle, put your feet on the upper rudder pedals, and pull back as hard as you can. Nothing's going to happen. At the beginning of the war, we flew short-range missions and encountered Spitfires, which were superior. I think that the Supermarine Spitfire was the most dangerous to us early on. I flew a Spitfire myself and it was a very, very good aircraft. If you were attacked when you were flying a Spitfire during the war years, you turned hard into the attacking aircraft and they just couldn't get behind you. It was much more maneuverable than the German aircraft. If you treated a Spitfire properly, it treated you properly. Treat it roughly or be careless with it and you were in trouble. I don't think we should ever forget what the Spitfire did for England. It was virtually England's saving grace. <laughs> 